Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us OG, Oginica, Genix, oh, with stories trending around the world. I can never be a doctor. Good anything. morning. I just have to try my own. Way. You did but well. The, but the most important thing is that's Machi Machi. You were the one that got the memo today. Yes, oh, yeah. I did. I did. I, I watched you and I was like, why is my pink dress? I'm just kidding. Good morning, Ayo. How are you this morning? Perfect. Good morning, Kayo Day. Always nice Always to have you here. To see you. Oji, the queen of Wawulens, and I like you. No, no, none of that today. We, I come in peace, as uh, always. That's well, all right. <laughs> well, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. One day after a blast at a hospital that killed hundreds and put immense strain on Gaza's struggling medical system, Israel announced on Wednesday that it would allow Egypt to deliver limited humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip. The announcement to allow water, food and other supplies came as U.S. President Joe Biden visited Israel in a show of support and revealed that data from his Defense Department showed that the hospital explosion was unlikely to have been caused by an airstrike from the Israeli military. I was deeply saddened and outraged by the uh, explosion at the hospital in Gaza yesterday. And based on what I've seen, it appears as though it was done by the other team, not, not you. Protesters staged anti-Israel rallies around the Middle East on Wednesday, some of them turning violent to voice outrage at the explosion that killed hundreds of Palestinians in the Al-Ahili hospital in the deadliest incident inside Gaza during the Israel-Hamas war. Palestinian officials say Israeli forces shot dead two Palestinian teenagers in West Bank during the protests. In Lebanon, security forces fired tear gas and water cannon at protesters who were throwing projectiles as a protest near the U.S. Embassy north of Beirut turned violent. America is the, is the devil, the real devil, because he supported Israel. And then all the world is blind. You see, you don't see what happened yesterday or before. The... While some 200 demonstrators, many from the group Jewish Voice for Peace, filed near the U.S. Capitol, chanting, the world is watching. They wore black t-shirts emblazoned with the messages that read, Jews say cease fire now and not in our name. Not in our name! Not in our name! Not in our name! In Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Wednesday congratulated former military head of state Yakubu Gowon on his 89th birthday. In his congratulatory message, the president praised the former head of state for establishing the National Youth Service Corps and encouraging inter-ethnic warmth. Tinubu further said that Gowon's space-setting attribute of leadership is one that all present and future Nigerian leaders must emulate. All I can say to you that we're on a conversation, we're on a journey that we're birthing something that will be phenomenal, something that will transcend what we have now, something that will shake the entire world. Finally, on our entertainment, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu, on Wednesday unveiled the multi-million dollar film city in the Ekpe local government area of the state in a bid to enhance the creative economy. The film city, which is situated on a 100 hectare land and worth $100 million, is in partnership with Ebony Life Academy, Del York, and Ogidi Studios. The governor says the project is set to be a comprehensive hub for various aspects of film production, including visual effects, scripting, cinematography, editing, as well as photography. All right, I'm so excited about this because you know I'm a filmmaker. I'm all about film and editing and you know, it's the, the biggest thing to happen right now. I mean, we had something like that. I believe it was in Tinapa, yeah. wasn't it, mm -hmm. um, Rufai? Yeah, we had we something did. like that in Tinapa. There's also been a couple of states that want to do yeah. something like this. In fact, they have now. I think Delta. Delta, yes. Delta has got one like that. Yes. But yes, this is very good. And yeah. anytime development comes, I'm excited. Yeah. It's just opening up Ekbe and yeah. a lot of good investments coming in. Yeah. But because 
you know, I'm, I'm happy. This is yeah. good. The, the government, government is doing is, well, but I mean, this right. whole idea about, you know, creating a, a great economy for the entertainment industry has to, you know, um, you know, take another dimension because we're also, you know, going to have to talk about the welfare, which will bring me to my next story. We'll turn our attention now to uh, Nollywood actor and comedian John Okafor, fondly called Mr. Ibu who has cried out for financial assistance over a medical condition. While well, in an Instagram video shared on Wednesday, the ace actor revealed that he's battling with a life-threatening illness. I have been down for so, 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 so many weeks. All I am hoping is your prayers and assistance. The medical director of this hospital said, the and the best solution is, in case his new idea didn't work, the best idea is to cut off my leg. Just see me. If they cut off my leg, where will I go to? Where will I go to? Where, where do I go from here? Please, please, be on the prayers for me. Talk to God Almighty. I don't want my leg to be cut off. Yeah, this is such an important story. And again, as I said before, it highlights the idea of the welfare of, you know, not even just entertain entertainers, sports people. We've had a lot of philanthropists. I know Femi Otedola has done a lot of donations for these athletes who have not had this type of insurance. I mean, I'm really hurt. But I, you know, if you love Mr. Ibu, please go on his Instagram page and, you know, whatever you can donate for this man because he's just said that he doesn't want to lose his leg really yeah. quickly. Yes. I'm really important and, and thanks for tying it to the film Lagos City, Film yeah. City. Um, beyond the contributions to the economy, Hollywood gives the US economy $504 billion yeah. and they're looking to show up revenue through the creative economy. I mean, for the first time, even at federal level, the president has created a ministry for not just arts and culture, but for the creative economy as well. So this administration, both federal and local and um, subnational, has seen the potential. Now, when it comes to investing in that sector, it's also important that the people who make that sector are able to benefit from the sector. There's a personal responsibility aspect of things, and there's also a, um, in terms of revenue and welfare of people who work there. Because it's largely informal in terms of the structure, individuals have to take responsibility for themselves. When you, when you talk about pension, when you talk about insurance, there's a personal responsibility element to that. And part of that, and I believe they said doing it for the sports people, was awareness education, advocacy, so that these umbrella bodies are going in and find and, and coming and um, striking deals with perhaps insurance companies and making it available yeah. to the players in that industry. Mr. Ibu has entertained Nigerians for many years and yes. I would love to see us rise up for him at this time. He celebrated his birthday in the hospital and this is what brought a lot of attention to his condition. Um, if I had mentioned that he'd been in and out of hospital in the last one year and we see that if he's not actually supported soon, he might lose a leg. That's yes. what he said in yes. his video. So it's mm. important to do that, but very importantly, as we're investing in you know, building film cities, fantastic, looking for how this, but other areas. Let the people who make Nollywood, because they say Nollywood within the, with the next Hollywood in terms of revenue, let them also be looked after. Let their interests be looked after. Let, them, let, let there be deals. Let their umbrella bodies rise up. We have umbrella bodies yes. for, um, you know, in, in these sectors. Let them rise up and protect their members and ensure yeah. that they, they cut a fair deal for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you know you to so so I, I really want to say a little bit. I mean, very well said, Ayo. We need to be able to fix this sector. How do we do it? Number one, we need to have, yes, I know it's likely informal, and that's why I remember the conversation we had with a couple of industry stakeholders yeah. while we're setting the agenda for the minister. But we need to be able to look for ways in which we will bring some structure. Recently, you saw a couple of Hollywood actors fighting for yes. increased pay, screenwriters and all of that. We need to bolster the union. Recently, there's been a lot of back and forth yeah. as regards to union. Because it is through the union for these actors, then you cannot talk about things like insurance scheme and all of that. It is still true the union, you can give a lot of education, you know, on personal health, you know, and all of that. It is true the union, we cannot even talk about proper remuneration because, you see, our artists are one of the most least paid in the world. Mm -hmm. It is here you don't talk about things like royalty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Till today, a lot of Dr. Ibu's films are shown on cruise liners all over the world. Mm -hmm. But does he get royalty payments for that? Madam Taiwa Jai license was here the other day, a couple of years ago, and she was talking about the fact that 
for that, uh, uh, what is it called? The sitcom she shot on British television. Many, some mothers, will have, some mothers will have them. Many years ago, she still gets some checks, albeit something little. So we need to be able to formalize this to ensure that they get this. And secondly, please, I beg people, do not politicize Mr. Ibu's situation. Do not, because you want to mock a man when he's down, to see all sorts of unsavory things attired to politics. And do not commit fraud with Mr. Ibu's situation. I've been seeing a lot of people opening all sorts of accounts in Mr. Ibu's name. They are yes. opening all sorts of accounts. They are putting all sorts of That's numbers a out there. To just read. Please do not turn Mr. Ibu's, you know, pain now mm -hmm. to your own gain. Yeah. It is not right. Don't do it. Have a conscience. And for those that want to reach out to him, I had to go and dig it. I think he has a, a verified Instagram page that is the real Mr. Ibu. Yes. Real Mr. Ibu. That's the page. Because I'm seeing a lot of people opening John Oka for another reason just to be able to steal from people. Please. Absolutely. I just need to get that out of the way. Bless well you all. Well said. Well said. I mean, still in Lagos, I mean, it's a great deal uh, the governor of Lagos has done with the film city. And I love that point that you made, Rufai, about the unions. We have to gather around and make sure that that film city it has all of that included as well. But still in Lagos, the Department of Environment on Wednesday released a drone footage of illegal structures built inside Jegdegede Ikota drainage channel. <laughs> the footage was shot in 2019, eliciting reactions. All right, Rufai, uh, Coyote, you weren't here when we took this story. I believe it was, was it this week, earlier this week? Oh, yeah, about the demolition in that area, a Kota area. And, uh, you know, those uh, buildings were built on drainage channels. Yes. And this is what they're showing, that these people are still building. I mean, this was since 2019, which brings up a lot of questions. Let me take a Twitter reaction from engineer Demola, who wrote, I will continue to emphasize this. The building plans went through multiple approval stages and LASPA officers are responsible for monitoring and granting approval at various stages of the construction process. This building did not appear overnight. Some individuals initially approved the site for this project and LASPA officials would have visited the site multiple times. Did they not notice that the building was situated on a waterway? The government cannot effectively address this issue without cleaning up its internal processes as long as the government officials continue to accept bribes from developers for special treatment of their files. We will continue to witness situations like this. There is an approval record for this site. Trace the file and identify the responsible officers, then apply sanctions to deter others from similar actions. Simple. I mean, I think engineer, this engineer hit the nail on the head. I mean, this is really what it is. I mean, like you said, I believe you said, you know, some of these things were done in the previous administration. Yeah. But at this point, this is not what we should be seeing. We shouldn't be hearing that, oh, look at what's happening. Please find out who committed the crime, arrest them or apply sanctions, and then this whole thing will be solved. Um, Kayode, quickly. Yes, on the, on the issue of illegal uh, structure, the government knows what to do. Yeah. There is no long story about it. There is nothing even for me to say. The state governor knows what needs to get done. The people in Ministry of Land, Ministry of uh, Environment, and all the other parastatals of government, they know what to do. Let them just do it. There's no long story about it. If they do it, then we're in a good place. When they fail, that's when we have the situation that we have on our hands. Mm. They just need to do their job and do it excellently well. When they do, the entire nation will celebrate. We will celebrate Lagos State Government when the people who are in that planning department, when they do their job and do it well, we will celebrate them. We will be happy to bring them on and talk about the good things that they're doing. There's so much work to be done in Lagos today. Yeah. And I hope that they will do it and make it happen quickly. Absolutely. Rufai, you saw those buildings, right? Mm -hmm. Only the fact that, only the, the, the division I'd like to have is the fact that things are not the way they seem in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. How did those buildings get there in the first That's place? The question Who collected asking. money? That's what we should yeah. investigate. That's why so it. some people must have collected money for those buildings to yeah. be there because those buildings were not supposed to be there in the first place. As we speak, God only knows the amount of backhand dealing going on. Absolutely. Some people will still be lobbying that they shouldn't bring those buildings down. 
You see, we have built a society where we are so proud about corruption. We don't even hide it any longer. Mm. We are so boisterous in corruption. Somebody was telling me about a case many years ago that a developer was telling him that, see, this property that I want to sell to you, this land, it's under a high tension wire, mm. but you can bribe people and still have it. Can you imagine the kind of country we live in? So the first question we should ask is, apart from demolition and let, letting the rule of law take its course, who approved the building in the first place? That's it. The people should bring out the name of the person that approved the building and the government official that approved such a building in the first place in an, in an area that is clearly a drainage and they must be made to face account first. Yes. So all of this happened because it's a big scale corruption. Everybody benefits. People have cashed out and they've gone. Things don't just happen in Lagos. Mm. Even in shanty communities, there are people that collect rent for those in shanty communities. And the next thing we start to act like we don't know what is going on. For a house to be built up to this area, somebody approved it. Yes. Things don't just happen. That's so true. let the Lagos take over. Apart from bringing down the homes, they should also look in what and fish out the bad eggs among them. Well said, Rufai. All right. Let's take another story then. Former secretary to the government of the Federation, Babachia David Lawal, who has been trending following his statement on Tuesday that Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi clearly won the last presidential election. Lawal, in a statement on Wednesday, said that he has been approached by some key allies of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu after he made the statement on Tuesday. Felix Mocha, a spokesman for the All Progressives Congress, while reacting to Lawal's statement, described him as incapable of rational thought. The former SGF, however, offered his sympathies to Mocha, saying that he was doing the job of a slave. He also lambasted President Bola Ahmed Tinubu and the leaders of the All Progressives Congress for allegedly transitioning the APC to an Islamic party and challenged them to be courageous enough to change the name of the party from the All Progressives Congress to the Islamic Party of Nigeria. I mean, um, Ayo, you know I'm coming to you on this story. I'm sure you saw. <laughs> when I saw the story trend, I was like, okay, it's, you know, it's one rhetoric after another, but it's yeah. not going to go away, is it's it? It's not. He's responding. So yeah. he first made the statement, mm -hmm. and he'd postulated that in his estimation, and he'd taken time out yes. to ensure that he had done his investigations, that Mr. Peter Obi won the elections, and President Bola Tinubu came a distant third. The truth is that the matter is in court, in and court. so the court will decide side and determine who truly won the election. So that's in court. However, then there became a sling, you know, word sling in March. First, Felix, uh, Felix Mocha of the APC came out to say that he wasn't, that he, uh, I can't remember the exact terms, but very unsavory terms yes. used to describe him. And then Mr. Babachelawa, who was not, he was ready for, you know, for anyone, came back and then gave them a detailed yeah. analysis of how he um, described not just Mr. Felix Mocha, but the APC as a whole. He went back down memory lane, talking about how they started the APC, that the APC was was meant to be a national party mm -hmm. with national spread representing the national interest of Nigeria and Nigerians. Hence, why they were very particular about zoning, ensuring that the chairman and the national secretary would not be from the same zone or from the same religion so that they had the spread and appeal to all Nigerians. However, unfortunately, what we see now is what is now called, or he now terms APC as an Islamic party. Yes. Now that is, I mean, open to conversation and discussions Absolutely. and to see the merit of what he says. Of course, the APC came on that um, intense criticism for fielding a Muslim Muslim ticket, yes. despite all the, um, you know, all the um, explanations for it, married to a Christian and the likes. This, the system and, the, and, the, and what we have on ground is that we do have that government in place. And a number of people have said it's not reflective. A number of criticisms, of, of course, under this administration is with appointments. In fact, Mr. Lawao said he has not made any competent appointments. I beg to differ. Earlier today, we had Dr. Lubo Mitunji Ojo, who is one of the appointees. And I must say that he's done quite well. Yeah. And a few other people. Not to say there haven't been some people who have been mute. We haven't heard from some ministers at all in terms of their plans. You know, people say raising questions as, as to... This competence that the mm. president said was going to bring in as part of his, you know, genius uh, way of leadership hasn't quite materialized. I believe it's, you know, if I said something really important earlier today about public op opinion yeah. and the importance 
of Nigerians being involved and actively so in governance and being free and able to air their opinions as to how they see governance. And no one should shut them up. Absolutely. Everyone has a right to um, speak and to give an opinion, of course, as long as it's legal and it's not against, you know, there are no um, laws or it's not slander or libel, libelous. But it's important for us to be able to share ideas like this and people should think. One of the things that is done is to guard people and actually stopping us from thinking and actually having an idea or opinion about the way that we are governed. Are people happy? Are people suffering in terms of what he said? Yeah, we see that you know, in terms of inflation, people's purchasing power, people have been plunged into poverty more and more. In terms of the people appointed, there are a few good ones and a few not so good ones. But also in terms of the APC, we have seen, look at what happened in the, house, in the Senate between the speaker, I mean between the president and um, the um, chief whip. There does seem to be that the, old, the glory days of the APC perhaps is not what it used to be. Yeah. And the tenet of what the people who founded the party used to be. And Mr. Lawal can certainly speak because he was part of that foundation. Yes. And so a few things that we must take out from what he said. Right. And also, I mean, aside, aside from him declaring Mr. Peter will be as president, that's the court to decide. Yeah. That's all I, 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 I like about that. that statement you made. He was part of the foundation. Rufai, how did you feel when you saw that, that statement? Um, that he made. I think that was on Monday, was it? Mm -hmm. yes, when he Monday. said that Peter will be one and Atiku came second and Tinubu Distant came third, distant third. And right. he had already done, he, he, he came up with his, some research and, uh, and all of that and he was sure of it. I'd like to talk with facts based on the electoral umpires mm -hmm. that returned elections in Nigeria. President Bola and Tinubu won the elections. Atiku Abake came second, Peter Obi came third. I don't know where Mr. Babache Lawal saw his results from. And I have to state that yeah. because I always deal with facts. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a case in court. A, the court will determine and make its decisions. And that's what we abide by. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, as regards all the other things he said, yes, there are some things that he's spot on on. And there are some that he's not spot on on, as was rightly said. He has foundational and institutional memory of the APC. Mm -hmm. And he has a right to be able to espouse those, you know, uh, ideas based on the memory he has of the APC. But other people too will also say, that all he's saying is sour grapes because he had actually left the APC. He's no mm -hmm. longer a member of the APC mm -hmm. and he's moved out of the APC. Mm -hmm. So he'll be able to say that. So there's a difference between his opinions and the, that of Mr. Mocha. All right. In his opinion, he says things are not working. He's crystal clear. Since President Tinubu got to power, the Naira has taken a beating, one of the worst performing currencies in the world mm -hmm. as we speak, right. from over 700 to over 1,000 to the dollar as we speak. Inflation is on the increase. Life has become harder for Nigerians. Manufacturers are complaining. Everybody's complaining. Right. He's spot on on that. All right, all right. The appointments too, we've also complained about nepotism, and it's crystal clear. In fact, recently, he had to take, after Fal uh, uh, Falano spoke about it, for Pre Mr. President Tinubu to go ahead and change the ICPC chief because as at, as at before the, uh, Falano spoke about mm -hmm. it, the ICPC chief and the EFCC chief were both from, the, South All right. from the Southwest. All right, so there are many factors he has there. But Point let's just stick to the fact. Based on the electoral empire, Tinubu won the election, Atiku was second, Obi was third. All right, then. All right, let's take another story. Well, highlighting this video that has rapidly gained traction on social media, showing a concerned teacher at the Uzala Community School in Edo State lamenting about the dilapidated state of the school. Let's take a look. Now, Saiti Primary School, Uzala, now be this. The school don't destroy, finish. Government not even they do anything. As they call this morning, huh? the two classes are being taken away. Remain the other one don't stay for. No, no, children not be enter class. Children not be enter class. She are not let teachers enter inside class. May has no go school not go collapse. Miss them. Now the community can't they build this one huh? because we went government make government come. Government not want to do anything. What can we do now? Who not children not they go school? Now, but you they go need that. If they did that, they go need that, but come Now they go here. Government. Government. If they can't need that, they go need that. If they can't need that, they go need that.
Well, I reached out to the Edo State Government and they said they, they have received the video, but it's good that the community is building another school there. And they said that the Edo State Government is going to look into it. They've also put out a statement saying that they have renovated 336 uh, primary schools, built 200 blocks of classrooms and others in the last 10 months, and that they are taking undertaking an upgrade of all schools in phases. All right, so I mean, that's that with that. Hopefully, things will work out. We'll take our final story in Ondo State. Last week, a principal of the St. Michael Catholic High School in Akure showed up dressed up in school uniform to welcome the new intake of students at the school. The surprise move left an atmosphere full of joy as the students cheerfully applauded their principal. Let's take a look. heroes that we yeah. speak about we we'll have to applaud that teacher yeah. Yeah. well done well done yeah. well we don't have much time i'd like to thank yeah. you all for your great analysis on what's trending today well that's all i have for you on what's trending today i'll see you all tomorrow